Nowadays, it takes more than just a vintage lens or editing software to create a filmic scene. It's a skill set matter and makes you stand out from other filmmakers. Today, we are diving into the world of Cinesaur's real film in Da Vinci Resolve. As color grading is one of the aspects that makes your video stand out. In this two part series, we will explore what real film is, its standout features, and how it elevates the filmmaking experience. Now we're in DaVinci Resolve and I've imported the real film power grade. This is just set by default. And as you can see in the CST in, you can see I set my input color space to Sony S Gamut 3 Cine and the input gamma to S Log 3. And what immediately stands out is that the output color space isn't to Rec 709, neither the Vinci white gamut, it's Airy white gamut. So that means that everything we do between these CST in and CST out notes are graded in the Airy color space. So technically, the final image should look a little bit more like it was shot on an Airy camera. I've graded this image before, so let me just grab that grade and I can show what I did to achieve this result. So I will just disable everything. Of course, enable the basic notes like high, mid, low, white balance, CST in, push pull, saturation, look, density. And these are some notes I've added myself, except for the curve sign. With CST out, of course, elation, soft eye, grain, clean, and the glow I've added myself as well. Uh, this dirt note I leave off like almost all the time because I don't really like the dirt. I think it's a little bit too much. And of course you can turn down the global blend, but still I don't like it. So basically what I just did is push and pull the exposure and the difference is that you don't do this with your primaries or your curves but you do this with the pivot slider. You can just leave the contrast as it is and push and pull the exposure just with the pivot slider. And the good thing about this is you can't either clip or crush your shadows as it's always protect it. There's some sort of limiter on it. So I just create it like this. And then we have a saturation look and density node, but I just leave them as defaults, like all the time. I've never had to change anything of them. If I want to change something, I just add some different nodes, some extra nodes for my own color grading workflow which I made a video about, so you can find it on the channel. Here I have my density curves. I do this to have a little bit more control over the density, saturation and the U. What I did is I changed the color space to HSV and unlinked the curves and just drag the saturation down, drag the exposure a little bit down and most of the time I leave the U just as default. Then I have an S curve. This is just my way of adding some more contrast to the image. And most of the time I set the key output to something like 0 0.5. So I just have a regular node like this. If I enable it, this is a little bit too much. So let's change the gain to like then I have another node, and on this node I just change every curve. So you can just change it to your liking or the look you're growing for. It's important to always have a certain look in mind before you start grading. You can't just do something and expect it to look nice. You really have to have an idea about the color grade you're going for. Then I have some power windows. These power windows play a big role in the color grading. As you can literally tell the viewer where to watch. And just by default, again, it looks great. Don't touch it. Then we have the elation. 
And the good thing about this is that you don't need Resolve Studio version to use it. I think we have a soft high note. This note brings the highlights a bit back. And how they did that is using the soft clip, but just leave it on default as well. Then we have the grain also looks good on default. I just leave it at 35 mil for on the T. And then we have a clean note to clean up the blacks and a little bit of the highlights as you can see, mostly the blacks. Just raise them a bit. Make sure nothing's clipped. And then of course I always add my own glow. And I've also covered these glow settings in my ebook and different techniques on how to use glow. I really think glow is an underestimated effect in the French Resolve. This example, I think the image should be a little bit more bright, as you can see also in scopes. So we end up something like this. If you want to learn more about color grading, you can always watch my other videos on my channel. And you can also download my ebook. So that's all for this first part. If you want to test out real film for yourself, I have a 10% discount code in the description. In the next and last part, I will grade some clips from scratch. So stay tuned for the second part and let me know what you think of Cinosaurus real film.